Good morning, Restoration Christian Fellowship. Goodness, it feels good to be around family. It's like being home, amen? Goodness. Pastor Gilbert got me this morning uh, saying I'm on loan. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just, just swaying back and forth and forth and back and just listening to the Lord. But I'm so excited to be here in front of you all on today, amen, um, to Pastor Gilbert. Obviously, um, one of my greatest mentors, and I, I, I literally mean that. Um, it's good when you have some, somebody in your life that you can call in crisis and you can call and celebrate with, but they're always there for you. Amen? I mean, I, I had an issue at the, at, the, at the school a few weeks back, and I called this man. I think it was almost 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock at night, and he answered. And we're working on some things, so I, I, just, I, just, I just love him. I, I love you. I'm so thankful for you to, to Pastor Katani, um, who is also on the seminary campus. Amen. You can put your hands together for that. <laughs> Pastor Vernon Jones, another good friend of mine and another seminarian in the house. Pastor Derek Washington, Pastor Karen, all the elders and family. I love you all. Thank you for having me, and good morning. Yeah, it's a little different now because, like he said, I, I thought he was playing. I literally am in his homiletics class on Monday morning, which is tomorrow, um, and I thought he was playing. So I was, I was going to ask him for extra credit, but since, <laughs> since, <laughs> hey, 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 my dad always told me you got to dribble and shoot or you don't know. You don't know if it's, if it's going to work. And so, yeah, it was, I, I appreciate the, the, the assignment, and I'm excited to be in front of you all on today. And, and I had um, the privilege to be in the minister's meeting this morning, and I tell you, my goodness, whatever it was that you all received on this weekend, let God just keep using you. You can hear it. I can feel in my spirit some of y'all want to shout, so don't mind me. Go ahead and shout and go ahead and get it out and praise God. But, but, but it's interesting because while he was speaking, he said something, and I wrote it down. I said, I'm using that. So there's your credit for that. I'm act like I said it. Um, and then part two is, is, is that's how God calmed me down this morning and let me know you're in the right place. And I gave you the right word. Amen. So um, as is my custom, I'm going to read the word, then we're going to pray. Um, and then we'll get into this thing. Is that all right? Yeah. Amen. If you have your Bibles with you, uh, your cell phones, whatever you use, um, please go to the book of 1 Timothy. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 4. I'll be reading verses 6 through 12. Again, that's the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 4. Verses 6 through 12, when you have it, if you let me know by saying amen. amen. That's all right. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 through 12. I'm reading from the English Standard Version of the Bible, and the word reads as thus. If you put these things before the brothers, you will be a good servant of Christ Jesus. Being trained, trained, let me put a pin right there. Being trained, some of your versions, if you have the NIV, says nourished. Being trained or being nourished in the words of the faith and of the good doctrine that you have followed had nothing to do with irreverent, silly myths. Rather, train yourself for godliness. For while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way. It holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance, for to this end we toil and strive, because we have our hope set on the living God, who is the Savior of all people, especially of those who believe. I command and teach these things, or command and teach these things. Let no one despise you for your youth, but set the believers an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. 
Beloved, pray with me on today as we focus on the sermonic title, Be the Example. Be the Example. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we come to you under the leading and the guiding of the Holy Spirit. God, thank you for your presence here on this morning. God, there is such a sweet, sweet presence in this place. And Father, we just want to honor you, God. God, we want to live for you, Father. God, we want to be examples, God, not only in here, God, but out to a dying world. So, God, I thank you on today, God, for the way you are moving in Restoration Christian Fellowship, God. God, for the stirring that you are doing in the leadership, God, and the stirring that's going on in the congregation. God, I thank you, God, because I can sense you are taking them to new levels, and we give you praise for that. But now, God, it's your time to preach. Now, God, it's your time to to challenge us, God, and to to convict us, Father. So I pray in the name of Jesus that you would sit me down and that the real preacher would stand up. For when Jesus comes, lives are saved. When Jesus comes, things are made better. When Jesus comes, we are redeemed. So, God, we give this service over to you. We tell you, have thine own way. We give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. It is in your son Jesus' name that we pray that everyone here say amen. Amen, amen, amen. Be the example. Gosh, I'm, I, 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 sometimes you study um, and God takes you to a place and, and, and firstly, um, and I'm doing this homiletically correct because he's saying he's not going to say nothing, but I'm not sure. So I'm going to make sure uh, that, we stay, that we stay in line. Um, sometimes when, you, when you're going through a text, if it's done properly while you're studying, the word has to hit you first. Right? The word has to hit you first. You have to be able to live it so that you can uh, vocalize it or verbalize it to a congregation of people. And, and as I was reading this text, which is very familiar to me, very familiar to me, um, I ended up in a hard place. Can I say that? I, I ended up in a hard place, Pastor Derek, because I had to look at my life and really look at my life. Have you ever really done a real true introspection of who you really are? And, and I had to question myself, am I, am I really being an example, Pastor Karen? Am, am I really being an example um, in, in conduct and, and in speech? Am I really being an example um, and, and, and living as if God is my full and only priority all the time? I, I'm not going to lie to you. The answer is no. The answer is the answer is no, and, and, and I submit to you today that, that I know that that's my problem. I can imagine some of you have the same problem. It's hard to be the example. So I, 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 I give you this piece of the introduction. We'll walk into the Word. So my daughter, she's a sophomore in high school now, um, and I'm praying because I don't know whether to get swole. Y'all, y'all, know, y'all know what I'm talking about? Y'all, y'all with me? I don't know if I should get swole. If I should go to Cabela's and purchase some, <laughs> if you're too holy, you won't catch that. Um, but I don't know. I don't know what, what, what I'm supposed to do. And, 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 and God said to me very plainly, your only job is just to be an example. Huh? Because, because she's, her, oh, she's a young lady now. She's growing up and it's scaring me and I want some of it to stop. But she's going to homecoming. Um, and, I, and, I, and I'm thinking, like, see, now I don't like boys at all. Not even a little bit. Um, don't like them. And then she's pretty, right? And I'm shouting that out uh, because her mama is, 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 is where, you know, that's, that's where all the credit goes because that's her twin. And so, and so mama look good. Daughter is starting to grow up, and she's pretty. And I'm going, Jesus, help me. And, and she's, she's, she's on her way, and she's going into the dance, and she looked beautiful last night. And I'm sitting there going, my Lord, what am I going to do? Because if, you, if I'm right as parents, you know you go, well, I want to protect her, and I don't want this to happen, and I don't want that to happen. But the whole point is, is that if I and her mother have been the correct example, yeah. it don't matter. Because she's going to know how to handle herself according to what we've taught her. I, I believe Paul, is in this pastoral epistle, is, is, is speaking to Timothy. 
And he's teaching him how to be the right type of example. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a pastoral epistle, and, and, and Paul is ultimately telling him about pastoral responsibilities. And even though I understand that the text uh, in itself and the letter that was written is, is more about his pastoral responsibilities as a leader, I think it is applicable to all of us in this place today. Does that make sense? And he's telling him how he should be shaped by the gospel. And so uh, we, we, we start in verse 6, but, but, but as uh, uh, is, is my custom in, in, in good uh, semin seminary preaching, i got to give you some background. Uh, so how Paul got to this point where he said, if you put these things before the brothers, if you put these things, what things is he talking about? Uh, verses 1 through 5, um, you'll notice he says something that's very familiar, and it's summarizing. He tells him, you know, in the last days, there's going to be some people that depart from the faith. Any, anybody? Any, anybody know people that are departing from the faith? say I'm a Christian, say I'm this and I'm that, but they're departing from the, the early truths, the foundational truths that they've already known. Some are departing from the faith and they're devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and, 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 and all kind of, he, say, he says a, a crazy, crazy phrase, um, um, deceitful spirits and the teaching of demons. It, 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 the, 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 the student in me wanted to study and say, okay, um, what, what are you talking about, Paul? Like, what, what, what are these deceitful teachings and things of that nature? And it's interesting because he doesn't go directly into it, and there were things that were going on, some, some things like Gnosticism, and that was uh, people that were denying the, the true nature of Christ and who he is. You had Judaizers. Um, ultimately, what the Judaizers were were those that wanted to bring the law and Jesus, so it was a both and for them. They thought you still had to operate inside of the law, and so you had to, you know, abstain from certain foods, and there were different things as it relates to the Jewish laws that they wanted to bring with it. You had all kind of different false teachings that were creeping into the church, somebody. And so I believe he's trying to tell them you need to watch your doctrine. You need to watch what you teach because bad doctrine, what bad doctrine does is it siphons people off. When you teach bad doctrine, the consequences are people. Uh, let, 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 let me see if I, if I can give you a little, 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 little bit of insight into that. The consequences are people. The consequences are people. So when, you, so when you preach just a prosperity gospel that's all about blessing, the, 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 the consequences are people. Uh, uh, when you teach a name and claim it doctrine, the consequences are our people, and I believe he's, he's telling him that because bad doctrine will inoculate you from truth. Amen? You ever, you ever heard something, you ever heard the wrong thing for so long, you end up thinking it was right? Y'all stop playing. I know I'm not the only one. You heard some stuff that was wrong, and all of a sudden you're, you're presented with truth, and you're like, that's not what it really is. In my spirit, I hear some stuff going on in the political thing, but I'm, I'm a preacher. I'm not in that, so I'm not going to go there. But when you hear the wrong thing for so long, you start calling the, 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 the wrong stuff the truth, and you start calling the truth alternative facts. I'm just saying. <laughs> Maybe I can say it to you a different ways. It's kind of like the analogy uh, of an elephant, right? They, they say when, when, when an elephant is, is a baby, uh, they, they, they put a chain around its ankle, and, 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 and it only can go so far, somebody. Because the, the, the law could only take them so, 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 so far. I, I'm just trying to set this thing up. Uh, but, but, but you chain it because you don't want it to know how strong and how powerful it actually is. Huh? And so, and so, and so as long as you chain it and you keep it in a space where it doesn't know who it is long enough that when it grows up and it's presented with truth and it has the ability to break the chain, it'll just keep going no further. My God. Some of us have been presented with so much bad doctrine that when truth comes out, we don't know. That Jesus is a savior, that Jesus is a healer, that Jesus is a mind fixer, that Jesus is a heart regulator. You don't know. So you can't walk that out. <laughs> and I'm just saying that he's trying to tell you, he's telling Paul, he's telling us, be the example. Be the example. Ah, I think when you get around verse 5, he, he tells him, he said, because everything created by God is good. 
Huh? And then just, 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 a, just, just a piece in that, just a piece in that. Just, I think the key point to him saying everything um, that God created is good is that I must learn and we must learn uh, to start calling good what God calls good. Messing with some of y'all in here. Stop telling people they can't eat pork. <laughs> y'all... <laughs> Y'all in here playing with me. Y'all in here playing with me. All y'all know is that all of us grew up on a pork chop. Huh? What's, what's, you better get an amen up in here. Yeah, all of us. You done grew up and became a five percenter, and now all of a sudden you back to Jesus? Like you ain't dibbling dabbling some stuff too. You went to five percenter, came back, now all of a sudden you different. No, dog. I don't eat no pork, man. Keep that swine away from me, man. <laughs> but you, but you eating the bar ass hot links at King Supers. That's got pork in it. <laughs> I mean, that's in jest. That's in jest. That's in jest. That's in jest. I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying that the, the biblically, um, what, what this would be called is asceticism. Amen. It was asceticism, and what asceticism means is, is, is basically um, denying yourself certain pleasures, right? Denying yourself certain pleasures of the flesh, denying yourself certain things so that you feel more holy. I'm going to get to that at the end, but. Yeah. So he tells them. Verse 6, if, if you put these things before the brothers, you will be a good servant of Christ Jesus. Being trained, I like the NIV where it says being nourished. Nourished or trained um, in the Greek is, is, is in the present tense, which means it's a continuous action. So not only was he trained well, not only was he nourished in the gospel well, but he's continuing to grow and be trained in the right and proper way. If you go back earlier in the book, he talks about how his mother raised him up in the faith and how his grandmother raised him up in the faith. And now Paul is helping raise him up in the faith. And so he's been nourished properly. I, I don't know about you, but before I got here, I had my grandmother praying for me. I, I, I had my mama telling me about Jesus. I, I had different people in my life that were nourishing my way. The deposit, the good deposit of faith is the accumulated teaching of Jesus. The accumulated teaching of Jesus, how much you've learned about Jesus, how much God is, how much you've been uh, brought into the knowledge of who Jesus is. It's the accumulated teaching of Jesus. My question to you is, do you have a good deposit? See, because I think he's saying here, we, we Timothy, we got to do the work of, of encouraging and engaging others who don't believe what we believe. First of all, you got to have the right doctrine, the right, correct teaching, but we got to engage those who don't believe what we believe, and that can even be Christians. Some folks have been taught some stuff for a long time that was wrong. They come up in here, here in Dr. Vernon, and, and all you preachers, and, and Dr. Gilbert, you're one of my favorites, so I kept you last. But they come in and go, what is he talking about? What do you mean, my identity? In my go day, huh? I'm supposed to reflect Christ. I mean, that's not what that means. You've never heard truth, so we're just going to keep rolling. We're going to keep rolling. We're going to keep rolling. He says, being, you will be a good servant of Christ Jesus, being trained in the words of the faith and of the good doctrine that you have followed. And it says, have nothing to do with irreverent, silly myths. Rather, train yourself for godliness. Let me say this to you, beloved. Some arguments are just fruitless, right? Yeah. There's no use in quarreling and going back and forth about certain things because it's not helping either of, a, either of us grow. Right? So some things are just, are just, are just fruitless, and, 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 and it's interesting that the people that want to argue over silly myths and things of that nature, uh, it, it comes out of the fact that they have a bad conscience anyway. You ever notice how bad consciences are link up with hypocrisy? Y'all didn't hear me. A bad conference, con conscience will link up with hypocr hypocrisy in a minute. Christians, sometimes we have bad consciences because we live a hypocritical You know, say thing and do and do, do do another. Just 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 saying, just a simple point. But faith and a good conscience also join together. 
So, 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 so he's saying, don't get caught up in all, in all that, but train yourself. Train yourself in godliness. It's interesting because it's football season, and, 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 and you don't just start out in the game. You start out on the practice field, and you got to put the work in so that you'll be prepared to play the game. And we got to put the work in. We have to do the spiritual lifting. Amen? We have to train ourselves for this. We have to train ourselves in godliness to train myself. I, 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 it can't be um, telling people, do as I say and not as I do. I know nobody in here does that. Uh, I got my guy in the back. He said, yeah, sometimes. But it's do as I say and as I do because I'm just trying to be the example. It says, rather train yourself for godliness. For while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way. So he's not knocking uh, uh, bodily training. He's not like, I wish Jeff was in here right now. Because Jeff on Facebook, that brother is like, I think he's on like day 200 and something, or 365. If it's training, I'm on day one. <laughs> yeah, I get to day two, and then I have to start back at zero, and I end up on day one again. So... He's not saying that that's not a value. There's definitely value in training yourself and, and, and being healthy and living a good life. But spiritual things, training yourself in godliness is the most important thing we can do, beloved. We have to work at it intentionally, day by day by day. And some of us, if I'm just being honest, we're saying that's what we're doing, but we don't really practice it. I don't pray as much as I should pray. I heard this man say this morning, let's just pray. Let's just start a habit of praying. Do you have a habit of loving? Do you have a habit of self-sacrifice? Do you have a habit of giving? Do you have a habit of gentleness? Or do you have a habit of rage and aggressiveness? You will be what you give attention to accomplishing. Train yourself in godliness. You, you are the example. Paul, Paul's telling Timothy that training will help him protect his character. I think everybody in here can admit you want your character to be protected. I don't want to be a hypocrite. I, 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 so I, I tell myself, I am going to do what God says do. Easy or hard, I'm going to do it because I'm in training. Some days in training you wake up sore and you don't feel like it. Some days are harder than others because you had a long day and you're tired and you don't feel like it. But I must train myself in godliness so no matter how I feel, no matter how it looks, no matter what I'm going through, I'm going to keep practicing the godly traits that are read out in Scripture. I'm trying to hurry. He says, nothing to do with irreverence, silly myths. Rather, train yourself for godliness for while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way. As it holds promise, promise uh, uh, for the present life and also for the, the, the life to come. Godliness is good because it's not just temporal. All right, you, you, you can get as big as you want. I was talking about my daughter. You get as big as you want. Eventually, we all going home. It's only for so long. I'm just saying. But godliness is forever. I'm training myself to meet the master so he'll say, well done. Dr. Gilbert, you've been a good and faithful servant. Come on and enter in and get the reward that's owed to you. So I'm in training because I want to get to heaven and please my father. I'm not worried about pleasing man. He says, he says, this saying is trustworthy and deserving of full accept acceptance for to this end, we toil and strive. He's saying that's, that's why we're, we're training in godliness. To this end, we're, we toil and strive because we have our hope set on the living God, who is the Savior of all people, especially of those who believe. Discipleship requires discipline. It's a, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a disciplined pursuit of righteousness. A disciplined pursuit of, 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 of spirituality. It's a disciplined pursuit because I want to leave a spiritual legacy behind. I.e. why I opened up with what I opened up with. I, I want my daughter to see us as an example so that we live the right type of legacy. So when she grows up, she's already had the proper training and she can teach others. That should be our goal. That we're living epistles, right? 
that we live so well that, that, that people uh, are, are, want to model our habits and the way we live because we are the light. But you got to question yourself, right? Am I really being the example? Sometimes it's a, a hard question because um, uh, uh, I have to, uh, th this, this was Dr. Gilbert, it's not mine, I'm, I'm giving this credit. Um, he said this morning, we need to take the time to make our own internal transition. You got to take the time to make an internal transition. Sometimes what that looks like, people, is you have to be transparent. You got to be transparent with yourself and others. Now, you got to do that in a smart way, but you got to be transparent. You, you, you know what really messes people up is sometimes it's not the crime that they commit, it's the cover up that gets them in trouble. I'm going to leave y'all alone. Some of y'all in here has definitely been some, never mind. Use me. I've, I've done some, some, some things that I believe are strictly criminal, Dr. Vernon. Only God saw that. <laughs> However, you know, certain things, you know, and then I'm going to use my wife. You know, she said, did you do this? Uh, yeah. Well, I'm at home. You are? And it's not done. You said you took out the trash. You said you was going to do the dishes. Baby, you know what happened. I got a headache, and I knew we were out of a leave. So I was just going to the store real quick to try to get something for, and she, stop lying. Just own it. And for some of us, that's what God is saying. Just own it. Because I'm going to make an internal transition. I'm learning how to be the example. I am training in righteousness. It's not perfection, but it's progress. So as long as I'm in progress, I ain't worried about what I used to do or who I used to be. But I can talk about it. I can tell you about it. I can testify about it. Why? Because I'm training in godliness. Come on. It says we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimony. So I'm going to overcome by owning it and being transparent because I'm in training for righteousness and I want to be the right example. I don't want you to see me and say, he's one thing and he's, not, and he's not the other. I want you to be able to see me and say, that brother is transparent. If you ask him, he'll tell you. I can tell you one thing about him, he loves Jesus. And they should be able to say that about everybody in this crowd. Yeah, they got a history. Yeah, they got an issue. But I'll tell you one thing, they love Jesus. You mess around, I ask them to pray. They pray in the office. You mess around, risk getting ridden up. I'm trying to be an example. I, I, I'm going to run to my clothes. Time is getting short. Um, he tells him, command and teach these things. I thought it was important to, to include verses 11 and 12 because of the four imperatives that he gives. Command and teach these things. Let no one despise you for your youth. Uh, uh, so, 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 so real quick for the young people and those that feel like, oh, well, I'm not old enough for God to call me. I'm not old enough to have a word in my mouth. There's no age requirement. Amen. Let, 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 let no one despise you for your youth, but set the believers an example uh, in, in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Uh, real quick, he didn't say YOLO. Look, some of the older folks are like, what did you just say YOLO? You mean Rolo, right, to candy? No, YOLO. YOLO, some of the younger people know what I'm talking about. It means you only live once. He ain't saying live like you only live once. Where you could just do anything. Quick, quick background as it relates to Ephesus, some of the things that were going on there and also in the Roman Empire, uh, uh, they lived very lascivious. Um, ultimately meaning um, they, they, they lived in a way to where it was like, if it feels good, do it. Somebody. So, some of y'all in here playing with me because that's how you live right now. If, if it feels good, do it. Pastor, I have a card for this. I'm not just doing it. I have glaucoma. Feel good, man. Feel good. Feel good. Feel good. I, just, I did it. I did it. I did it. I did it. It felt good. I did it. I did it. I was out at the club. I said I wasn't drinking no more. But it feel good. I get a couple in me and I'm a dancing machine. <laughs> Done with the examples on that one. Um, 
He didn't say, if it feels good, do it. And then the opposite of that can be aestheticism, right? Where we've become so holy that that's how we, you know, we operate for ourselves is that um, I'm so holy, like, you, you got nothing on me. I got it all figured out. I'm doing everything. I abstain from meat. I'm practicing the law. I'm doing this and I'm doing that. Um, let me say something. As he relates to this, and, and, and I think it's very important to understand, in speech, how do you really talk? In here, God bless you, Pastor Vernon. Boy, you man of God. I, I hope the Lord blesses you in your entire life, your family and everything. How do you really talk? You got a problem with cussing? Own it. Make an internal transition. In conduct, how's your behavior? My daughter's sitting in front of me, so I can't lie. I'm up here preaching today, but if somebody cuts me off when I leave, I have a problem with my conduct when people. I'm, I don't want to be an example. I really do. But I got to work on that. I got to work on that. Work on that. In love. In love. Love. There's, married, there's two married couples. A bunch of married couples up here. In love. When we get mad at each other, how's my love? Say something wrong to me. Who are you talking to? Who you talking to? You didn't, don't talk to me. And, then, and look at both. See what's funny? Y'all can't see my point of view. Both Katani and my wife look like, who are you talking to? Who you think you are? Boo-boo. Who you think you are? <laughs> you don't run this town. This <laughs> In faith, in faith, in faith, in faith, is your faith wobbly? Be honest. I got good faith when I, you know, you know, you go somewhere and you find a twenty dollar bill on the ground. Jesus, that's you. That's uh, that you just blew me a kiss. That's what I'm talking about. I believe you're gonna do everything that you said you were gonna do, and then all of a sudden, you know, water bill come in and your stuff is jacked up and you you don't get paid till next week. Father, the enemy is on my hip, man. I don't know. Do you, do you stay in faith? I'm just saying make an internal transition because somebody needs you to be that example. In purity, I think purity speaks for itself, huh? It's holy action. Now, now I think the key to this is that we must understand, um, lastly, is that we are not to be defined by our exclusivity. Don't, don't, don't be the example that's defined by your exclusivity. I don't do that. I don't go over there. I don't fool around with those people. Well, how are they going to hear Jesus? We are not but defined by our exclusivity. It's not what I don't do that. I don't go there. No. If you, if you, I, I believe somewhere in the Bible it says, and after thou has been converted, go back and strengthen. If you're going to be the example and you're intentionally training and working in godlessness, then there should be some things that don't have the same effect on you anymore. So you can go be the example in the club. You can go be the example to somebody that is struggling with their lifestyle choices. You can be the example. So I close with this. Here's the question. Here's the question. Is my, is your. Is my life pattern oriented around God? It's a simple question. Because as I said earlier, to be godly means that God must be my chief priority. So in closing, I just want to give you a challenge. Um, a lot of experts say it takes 21 days to create a habit, right? 21 days to create a habit. So I want to give you a challenge. I want to give you a challenge. For the next 21 days, and it should go further if you do it right. For the next 21 days, you're challenged to live in godliness, to train in godliness. So you know what it is for you. If prayer isn't a part of your normal lifestyle, 21 days give God everything you got. Watch how it changes your relationship and changes the people around you. And watch some of the benefits if you don't love hard enough. 21 days. If, 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 if you need to work on serving, 21 days, find something you can do to serve in the community or your fellow brother or sister. 21 days. I challenge you to train yourself 
in godliness. And watch out, you'll look up and you will be the example. God bless you.